What's going on, guys? We're here. We're live. Welcome to a brand new Poker Live podcast. My name is Joey Grimwan, a.k.a. Chicago Joey. Uh, back doing podcasts today, and we got a big week coming up over the today and these next bunch of days. We're doing that 10K PLO scoop final table today. We also have Maury Escondani on Saturday. He's the one that created and helped create all these amazing poker shows we've been watching for years. Uh, Monday, Matt Berkey. Tuesday, Phil Helmuth, the legend himself. Uh, Thursday, Timex, Mike's McDonald. Talk about Super High Roller Bowl, uh, the gambling Friday, Jason Kuhn's back on, and we're going to be having PLP Pertouche back on as well. And uh, podcasts are all officially updated on iTunes, search Poker Life. Joining me today on the podcast is a young woman who does many things. She's not only a professional world traveler, but she is an entrepreneur in a country that she does not live in. She is a <laughs> professional video maker on, on, on all social media platforms. She makes the coolest videos when she goes travels around the world with the WPT. She's been the WPT voice or the the i mean I guess that's mike sense and i suppose might be the voice but she's the the woman on camera that just makes the show look so great and she does a great job for it and it's a woman i've been wanting to have on the podcast for a long time and we finally made this happen joining me today is lynn gill martin live from her place in los angeles where she has no furniture because she's moving to mexico what's going on lynn welcome to the podcast Wow, thank you. That was a good introduction. <laughs> Did you rehearse that? Um, I'm a, so one of my specialties, I'm a professional introduction giver. Yeah, I can tell. Well, thank you very much. I'm, well, I'm, I mean, you, oh. I'm so wrapped to be here. Thank you. Yeah, you have, a, you have a lot going on with yourself, Lynn. You do like, you seem like, and I kind of, it's kind of interesting that you mentioned this the other day when uh, we were messaging about coming on the podcast. You said, what was that book that you're reading about executing? Because you're like, I'm doing a lot of things. And then I like looked more into it. I'm like, yeah, you, you, you're doing a lot of different things, it seems like, Lynn. Yeah, a lot of things. I'm trying to figure out how to sort of merge them all together. A lot of disjointed things, but I guess the common denominator is me and my interests in them. So I'll just see if it works, make it work. <laughs> So, Lynn, for the people out there that might, I got, if you've ever watched WPT in the uh, recent years, I, I'm sure you know of Lynn. Before that, I know you did some stuff with uh, with World Series of Poker as well, too. I know you're on a lot of the Aussie Million coverage as well, which I remember because they, they had those cash games back then, too. And then your voice would come on. And, it, and I don't know, it's just like I, I miss those uh, Aussie Million cash games, by the way. They need to bring those back. But kind of what would be your your like brief explanation? So when you meet people and if they say, oh, what do you do, Lynn? Like, what would you kind of tell them that you do? Uh, I mean, my, my main number one role is anchor of the World Poker Tour. That's, that's, that's what I do. <laughs> that's kind of who I am. Um, but, I mean, I've been around poker for a long time, and I also worked at Poker News for like four years as a reporter before mm. this. So, um, yeah, I've been, I've been traveling the poker circuit for ages, talking about the game for, oh, I think, 10 years. Um, yeah, but now uh, for the last four years, I can't believe it's already been four years because it's just been a whirlwind. It's gone so fast. But I've been working as the anchor for WPT um, and also Alpha 8. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and it's amazing. It's a dream. So, yeah, I, I, I forgot about the poker news stuff. I remember back in the day, like I think you and I, I know Christy was doing a lot more of that back then too. And then it's sort of like you go from that, you go from this, and now you're sort of doing the WPT stuff. And it's kind of like, a, I mean, it seems pretty cool that you've been able to, to stay in poker this long. You still enjoy doing it too, it seems like, because I know some people, they stay in poker and then they're like, all right, I want to get the hell out of poker. But I mean, I've been playing it now 10, 11 years. I still love playing poker. still love playing the great game of Potlum Omaha. And, you know, I really enjoy doing this type of stuff. So what is it about doing this type of stuff that, and being in poker that, like, makes you excited? Because it seems like for yourself, I mean, I don't know, it seems like you could probably do anything that you wanted to do, but, you know, you wow. decided to stick around in poker. Thank you. I love it. I think it's such an interesting um, industry. It's it's fascinating. I love talking to people who aren't in poker about it and just how unique it is because people from all walks of life are involved in this game and then there's people who are playing the game professionally um, like yourself who just their whole life is dedicated on, on uh, in this game um, and, and riding this roller coaster that it is. Uh, and then there's so many people who just play it as a hobby and just for fun they might be playing it for the first time and you've got like these tables of people from all kinds of realms you've got like some billionaire and then you've got some kid who's never had a job but he's making more money than most people and then you've got a mom who's in vegas for the weekend or whatever you just got all these different people sitting at a table for for eight hours or something um and i think that that's so interesting and, and it's a really great way to bring so many people together um and i i've made met some incredible people i've made some amazing friends and and it's because of poker that I am doing all these other different random projects because I meet other interesting people and 
um, come up with different ideas and have different opportunities to do different stuff. So I think that's a big key. I think with any uh, career that you take, that um, a career path that you take, that you have balance. And um, I love the poker world. I think it's always going to be a part of my life, I feel. Um, but it's not it's not 100% of what my energy goes into. And I think that's probably what helps me sustain my love and passion and energy for it, I think. Yeah. People in chat, people in chat out there, we're already, they're saying, where's the, what's the beeping? Is that it? What is that beep? That noise? Oh yeah, my, sorry. My iMessage, I'm gonna log out of it. It's on my computer. I'm gonna oh, I'm, oh yeah, I forgot. I'm not, I'm not a big Mac guy. Everyone tells me I need to get a Mac. And they, when I tell them I don't have a Mac, they call me a big fish, but. You don't even have a Mac and you're doing all this like these videos and oh dude. Told you you. <laughs> it happens every time. Anyone that has a Mac, that's what they say. They're like, Well, you don't have a Mac. Like what you say like, <laughs> shocked that you don't have a Mac. It's it's I, I no, I have I have this old, you know, I have Windows, man. I'm a Windows kind of guy. I do got the iPhone, but but yeah, just using the Windows here. So but yeah, you kind of mentioned a lot of interesting things there, which is that poker, you know, really it has so many different types of people that that come out and play. And as you as you're traveling around with WPT. I imagine you get to interact like you're just in Amsterdam. I get to, you just get to interact with so many different types of people that you probably get to see a much different side of poker than, I mean, a large majority of people that are in the poker industry. Yeah, I, I, I guess. I mean, it, it's, it's kind of crazy because I've, I've been around it so long. It's such a norm now to, mm -hmm. to, to see high stakes poker games going on, you know? And I remember when I first, uh, when I first saw a, a high stakes game happening, I used to work at um, Crown Casino in, in Melbourne and um, I remember going into the poker room and there was a big, it was probably like a 10, 20 cash game happening and my mind was blown when someone told me how much the chip denominations were and how much money was sitting at the table and now, yeah, and it, it just, it just, yeah, it was just ridiculous but I think it's so crazy. I have to keep reminding myself that that's not normal now <laughs> to mm -hmm. other people. If I walk past a, a table and there's hundreds of thousands of dollars sitting on it and being exchanged between people, like that, that's pretty surreal. It's pretty nuts. Yeah, I think that's a really great point. A lot of people I know, like, you know, my, my, my wizard assistant Joan is here and he always talks about, you know, he's like, you know, this sort of lifestyle is pretty unique. And I'm like, I mean, it seems so normal. Like you mentioned, right? 10 years, long time. It just seems all normal. You know, yeah. people loaning people a bunch of money, like, hey, can you wire me $20,000? And someone wires the person $20,000. Like, it's pretty, these things don't really happen out there, you know, in, outside of the poker world and probably in some little weird parts of the world. But as you mentioned, it is pretty strange to go walk by and there's just, everyone's got a $100,000 chip stack there. It's just, the poker world is a is a interesting place. And I guess for yourself, it seems like you do interact a lot with, with, with the type of actressing and, and doing a lot of stuff in L.A., and sort of what is the reaction people get when you tell them more about what you do? And they, they have a lot of questions or they like just they say they play poker, too, or they tell you their cousin Jimmy plays at the casino and makes a million dollars there. Or like what's kind of the pe people's feedback? <laughs> um, all of the above. I get all of the above. But you know what? I actually really loved the video you put out the other day um, about, you know, poker being hard. Mm -hmm. And uh, and also Jason Kuhn posted something really cool on Instagram um, at a similar time was saying, how so many people ask him, you know, I want to start playing poker. And I, the two of you just made such a good point that um, I am absolutely not a professional player. I play for fun. But that's usually the, 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 the majority of people will respond with, oh, yeah, I'd love to learn how to play. Like, you'll have to teach me. You know, I want to start playing. And it's like you don't – you can't just, like, go and just – I mean, you can. But uh, you, you'll see these people earning a bunch of money from the outside and it just kind of looks easy that they're just playing this game and they just want to go and – I want to try that too. It's just like an easy way to make money. It's like you've got to invest time. You've got to invest uh, time and money uh, into learning about the game. And that's that, that's usually my, my response, I guess. Most people are just like, I want to play too. I want this easy way to make cash. <laughs> it's, like, it's not easy. It's not easy at all. No, yeah, for I sure. Think, yeah, I think a lot of people get in there and they, 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 they see the, you know, they see WPT on television, right? They see this guy win a lot of money. They're like the... They got the, the Royal Flush girls are out there and they see the selfies on, on Twitter where the guy's surrounded by three beautiful women from WPT and they see that they go, I want to win a WTT. Man, fuck, man. That looks like a dream right there. You know, yeah. shout out to me. Shout out to me who maybe said a comment like that. And <laughs> uh, but they, <laughs> Make it happen. But they don't realize, right, it's, you know, it's a lot more to it. The, the people that do that are very much outliers in the poker world. If you just go to a tournament and you win all this money, most people don't do that one. And two, the people that do make it and are successful are people who put in a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton of work and effort for a consistent amount of time. 
And, uh, and right, I think most people don't realize that. And it makes sense too. It's hard to really see that part of things. You don't really get to see that part of things. Yeah, totally. And it's kind of like any, any so athlete investing into, into any sport, you know, they've got to train every day. They've got to uh, work on their game. They've got to get coaches. They've got to, and yeah, they have bad days and good days. And it's, it's, it's very similar. So yeah. at the end, I think people don't give poker players uh, that kind of credit. Yeah, guys, get, get poker players more credit out there if you're watching this right now. Come on, give us some more credit. <laughs> but, wait, but I know you do play some poker, right? And I was, I was doing a little bit of looking around. And I've seen it over time. So you, I know you play some poker. I know you've had some, you know, a, a little success in some of these tournaments out there. You know, you play a lot. You play a little bit or you play a lot or how much do you think that you play? I play a little bit, just a little bit. I play probably once a month at this rate. I reckon that I would actually get to sit down at a table, but there's always just for fun. I play in a couple few home games in LA and sometimes when I'm at work, I might jump on a table, but I'm just, I usually don't have a chance because I'm working so much. And then once I'm done, I just want to get out of the casino and like get some fresh air or something uh, or sleep. So I would love to play more, but I'm not as emotionally stable as all of y'all <laughs> to handle all those ups and downs as frequently. <laughs> I think my mother might beg to differ in terms of that emotionally stability thing right there. But yeah, I think that's uh Your mom is amazing. I saw her on Inst on her on your uh, Instagram stories. Yeah, she right came over. She, glass of wine. What a champ. Dude, she came over last night when I was playing PLO online. She's she's like, Where's this glass of wine from? I go, last night, mom. She's like, All right, I'm gonna have this. Starts drinking, watching me play PLO. She's like, Who is this guy? He's, did he got all your money? This money bags guy? I'm like, Yes, mother, he's got a bunch of my money right now. And I want a big pot, and she's like cheering and yelling. So I don't know. It's uh, it's uh, it was quite. It was fun. It was a very fun time to have her come by, and she brought the run good there. So, but like, do you? Yeah. So you play once a month. Do you play the Great Game of Potluck in Omaha by any chance? I don't. Oh. I don't. Oh. I've tried it, but I don't. I'm still trying to, you know, get you know more than half decent at at, at No Limit Hold'em. So <laughs> one game at a time. Yeah, I can understand that. So you mentioned yeah. kind of, the, you know, you mentioned kind of the, the professional, professional world traveler. I talked about the top of things. And it seems like right now with what you guys are doing with WPT, there's a lot of this unique content being created on sites. Like, for instance, in Amsterdam, I know my buddy Drew Amato out there. Big shout out to my buddy Drew, one of the best photographers in the entire world. If you don't follow Drew, check out his Instagram page. He's, he's got such great pictures up there. And he, and he works a lot with us. Yeah, we have WPT. Badass this week because all his photos. He is a he is a wizard when it comes to the pictures, man. But I know you know guys were out there shooting a lot of content. You're doing a lot of uh, photos, a lot of unique little video clips out there. So what's kind of um, like what's the thinking behind that with WPT right now? Um, I think like, while we we're there, we just wanted to really uh, show off the fun uh, that goes on off of the felt. I mean, you know what happens at a poker tournament? There's a bunch of events, and you get all those updates, and you get all that news, and that's great. Um, but it, it, it's, it's easy to sometimes forget about what's happening outside the casino. And I think it's important. I mean, it's, we go to these extraordinary places all around the world. Um, and it's, it's a nice addition to, to the journey if you're, if you're traveling the poker circuit. So, um, we were just, yeah, focusing on the fun or outside the casino of Amsterdam. And we were, I was having a great time <laughs> making that content. <laughs> it wasn't the worst job. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, you're like, wait, I get to go travel around. I get to travel around Amsterdam, make a lot of fun videos, shoot a lot of cool pictures, get to look beautiful and all this stuff. Okay. That sounds like a, that sounds, I wish I wouldn't pay me to do that. That, that sounds like a pretty fun thing to be doing. Kind of is a dream job, I think. Wait, is the WPT coming to India too? Or are you guys going to be going to India sometime soon? Yeah, we're going to India. We're going to Punta del Este down in Uruguay. We're uh, spreading the wings. That's for sure. Yeah, it seems like WPT, it, it felt like they're, you know, for kind of a couple years, you know, I'm not sure exactly, you know, it was kind of like it grew up, it was really popular. And then it sort of was like, I felt like it was here. And now it's just like, something's been happening these past years, it feels like. And WPT Deep Stacks is coming on pretty strong. And I think uh, WPT just acquired WP Deep Stacks as well, if I'm not mistaken. It seems like WPT right now is really doing a lot of really cool things in terms of the, uh, you know, the online content, which is now, it's a big thing in the online world, creating these content for people who are always on Instagram and on Twitter and on Facebook. So it seems like WPT is doing a lot of really cool things. And as you mentioned, expansion into these new areas. Mm -hmm, for sure. So our new parent company, Our Game, is a, a company in China. And they are like monstrous in the social gaming world. And they're very interested in uh, the online world and, and, and technology and new media. 
and uh, that has allowed us to really sort of uh, go even further with, with creating content and, and expanding into newer regions and, and just get a bit more creative and throw things at the wall and see what sticks. So it's, it's exciting. It's, it's, it's so cool to just be able to sort of uh, just try new things and, and go to new places and see what happens. So who knows? Yeah. We're in China as well, which is, which is amazing. Um, yeah, just all over the place. I love it. I'm kind of like, I, it, it's exciting and like, oh God, overwhelming to think of how much travel is, is happening. But uh, I love it. I think I'll never so, stop. <laughs> how, so how much of an input do you get to have uh, when it comes to creating different things? I know I've worked with a couple of different companies before and you know, you always get like a little bit of every, everything's kind of different. You get some creative input, but obviously other ones are just like, hey, do this, do that. So when it comes to yourself, do you, are, do you let you bring ideas to the table or is that kind of stuff that, you know, when you're shooting this, this online content for, for Instagram type of stuff, do you get to just come up with these cool ideas or, or what's kind of, um, how's that work up? Yeah, I am a bit of a control freak when it comes to uh, my content. <laughs> um, so even whether I had, whether they gave me the choice or not, I would probably try to have input. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, so, and I think that comes from back in the days, like at Poker News, where we were essentially creating our own content. So I've always sort of liked to um, have a big part in it. Um, it's funny, in, in Amsterdam, there wasn't uh, an intention to create Instagram videos, really. It was more like, yeah, well, I mean, we were, we we're going to create all these YouTube videos, but uh, just one day, because I've been making Instagram videos anyway myself, and so I just, I had this new toy that I bought, the GGI Osmo, the gimbal for the iPhone, which mm -hmm. is awesome. Um, and it's just, it's a stabilizer. So I was walking through the park and I'm making all these videos and the shots looked amazing. So I just cut it together into a video and they didn't even realize I was going to do that. <laughs> I was like, hey, look what I made. And they're like, can you do more of that? <laughs> sure. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, yeah, I'll have some input. But um, but then also then it's different, you know, with the show. Um, uh, on Alpha 8, I was a producer. So I had uh, input on the segments um, that we would create, so, which the intention for those was the same thing, showing off the, the locations that we were at and getting to know the players. Um, and that was the focus. So that was great that I was involved, um, sort of the whole planning stage of that and the creation of that. Um, but then on WPT, we've got a huge production team and they take care of all of that. And, it, and it's, 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 it's also nice too to just like let it go and they'll be like, okay, Lynn, be here at this time. This is who we're seeing. This is what we're doing. And then I'm like, okay, sweet. So um, it's a nice balance of both. Hmm. When you when you get dressed up for WPT shows, do they give you those clothes, or do you have your own clothes for those? Uh, for the shows, they, they that's the WPT wardrobe. Yeah. Okay. I was like, I thought I thought those were all your dress. I'm like, man, dude, how does? I was like, she just has so many of these awesome dresses, man. I I, I didn't know if they was like provided because I know sometimes the people will give you clothes, and then sometimes you got to bring your own stuff to the table, but. I wish actually I hadn't packed it. My, so because I'm packing, I'm moving at the moment, and my my apartment is empty. But I still have all my clothes here, and I just packed one entire suitcase, which was my WPT just dresses suitcase, of full, and it is full. It's all my WPT dresses. Um, so yeah, I mean, so WPT they they actually they had a stylist for a while, but then I like like I said, I'm a control freak, so I was always like suggesting, <laughs> what about this? What about this dress and this dress? And so now they actually let me go shopping for my own wardrobe, which is pretty cool. Wow, I mean that's obviously a big, big perk of the job. I mean, man, I I don't know. I try to. I wish I could. Um, I don't know. Do I wish that? I'm trying to think. I wish I want to find something. People are gonna hit me up now about this, maybe, but. If anyone out there has something where you want to give me some clothes, let me know, man. I'm more than open to it because I, I probably, you know, I could use stylus as well, too. So I'm not quite as fa I try to be fashiony, but I just sort of grab things out and, and throw it against the wall. So you're doing all right. I'm liking these beads you're wearing. Yeah. I mean, listen, you can't go wrong with these beads. I've had them for a long time now. Shout out to PLP. He inspired me to get these and uh, simple, right? I got one thing. I sort of have it in a couple of different colors and just sort of recycle it around so i know we got what i know we got one question out there and this was a question that came in by text message from my buddy drew amato he says can you ask lynn what the craziest thing she did in amsterdam was i knew that was coming thanks drew <laughs> um uh we i would have to say going to a show at the red light district we went to a little uh oh. <laughs> show <laughs> huh? have you been to amsterdam no, tell us. Well, tell us more. No, let's assume. Let's assume that none of us out there in the chat have been to Amsterdam. Tell us exactly what this means. Um, 
I'm, I, I'm in love with that city. I think it's amazing. And we went to the red light district, which I always heard was kind of uh, uh, not a very nice place to go. Um, but I was like, I've got to see it. And uh, I was, I was, I thought it was going to be worse than it was. I thought it was pretty interesting. It was fascinating. It was just, it was quite pretty because there's a canal going down the middle. It's like this one long street and there's a beautiful canal going down the middle with ferry lights and, and yachts going by it. And then streets on either side and you've got cafes and restaurants and pubs and then some windows and and then there's girls in the windows <laughs> just standing there um texting they were all texting by the way which i thought was hilarious but in lingerie standing in the windows just uh, for sale um it was just crazy to see that but so obviously it's a whole uh, district of sex <laughs> and then they've got shows so we all decided at like 12 o'clock and like midnight that we go and see one of the shows which was, was quite hilarious tell us <laughs> tell us more paint a paint a, photo, <laughs> paint a picture for us I, I i'm not quite sure so you're walking through this red light district there's a canal in the middle there's shops there's women texting in, in lingerie and then midnight suddenly the wp2 wpt crew gets inspired to, to walk inside no. a show. What's this, what's this like? What's the, do you- I'm not throwing WPG crew under the bus. It was poker players. It was a mix of uh, all kinds of people. Um, I won't say anyone who was there. Obviously, I think uh, Drew kind of put his hand up for that one. He was there. Um, yeah, it was just like a show. You just go in and you pay. <laughs> and it was like a theater. It was like going into this old school kind of theater where there was all these theater chairs. And then the curtains opened right as we were getting in there. And um, there was a, a couple of girls having a good time on the on the stage, <laughs> and that did my, buddy, like, did my buddy Drew hop in this was I don't know like, I don't know how this worked I, I I really I don't even know what this this sounds all like kind of foreign to me I don't know if this is a true story. Was, but well, when I walked happened. in, I was like, whoa, what have we got ourselves into? Because the girls are having a good time. No, no one got up there. Like you go, it's like going into a theater. It's like going to to see a show, and and you go and you sit down. <laughs> we gotta go to <laughs> Come on, we gotta go to Amsterdam, buddy. Come on. My God. It was kind of like, it was a comedy. It was like a comedic show because then the next, because uh, each each act went for like five minutes, right? So then the next act comes out and it's this big gorilla, like a guy dressed in a gorilla suit holding a banana and, and some girl in a like a, a <laughs> I don't know, in some like Bahamas kind of themed outfit. But nothing happened. I mean, it was just them, she was dancing around fully clothed and he had some banana in his hand. And it was just, it was just hilarious. We, we actually couldn't stop laughing. Um, so much so that they had to say over the loudspeaker, can the people in the middle row, please stop laughing, <laughs> please keep it down. <laughs> it, was just, it was hilarious. So thanks, Drew. Didn't really uh, want to talk about that. <laughs> wow. Um, uh, WPT currently hiring, guys. If you want, looking for a job, you're looking to go travel around and, uh, and experience the nice amenities these different cities that offer. Go to wpt.com slash jobs, put in promo code wow. Joey, and you'll, your application will be pushed to the top of the page. <laughs> it's definitely not true, but, uh, but yeah, that's some kind of fun, man. So that's so that's the craziest thing that happened in Amsterdam. That's the craziest thing that happened. There's all, there's, there's all the typical stories of Amsterdam, but uh, that's not really my, my thing, so you know, the coffee shops, there's all the coffee shops where smoking is legal. Everyone goes into all uh, the little cafes, which we walked into one <clears throat> and everyone was uh, smoking marijuana and it stank. And I was like, we got to get out of here. And uh, yeah, so unfortunately, I don't have any stories of edibles or anything like that. That's oh, we got them. I did edibles <laughs> on a recent podcast with Luke Shorts and I got to say, got out, got, I guess it wasn't that out of line. We kind of calmed down from the out of blindness. So I'm kind of looking at my, uh, you know, kind of thinking about this. You're going to Mexico soon, right? You're moving to Mexico. And why are you moving to Mexico? Even though I kind of I think I know why you're moving to Mexico. But tell people why you're deciding to leave Los Angeles and go to Mexico City. Um, there's a bunch of reasons. So that's why I just figured why not. Um, so my boyfriend's from Mexico City. Mm -hmm. So I spend a lot of time down in Mexico. Uh, for like last six years, I've been traveling back and forth. And I love it. I love <laughs> every place I go to in that country. I just love it. Um, whether it's the beach or Mexico City or the jungle, it's just it's just beautiful. Um, and I still, even though I've been with my boyfriend for six years and Spanish is his uh, native tongue, I still don't speak Spanish. So I feel it's embarrassing wow. now when I go with his family and I still can't. I mean, I know a bunch of words, 
but I don't know how to string them into sentences yet. So I know that if I just immerse myself uh, for a few months, uh, I will finally become fluent. So that's, that's a huge intention. And another huge one is that we have a farm in <laughs> just about three hours outside Mexico City that we've partnered in. And I want to go and uh, work on, on building that. We're going to build our own house, Joey, with our hands. So you're going to... Let me be straight. You're going to build a house on a farm three hours outside of Mexico City. That's right. Dare I, <laughs> dare I say, GT? Wait, are you, you building that? You, just you and, and, and your boyfriend are going to build the house with your, that's it? Like a crew coming? I, I don't know how it works. I don't know. I mean, I, I've heard of stories where people do that in, uh, in different countries. Well, so <clears throat> there will be like a team, but it's a method. So the farm, it's all about, uh, it's all completely uh, like sustainable farming and building. That's what it's all about. It's called, it's permaculture is the method of farming that we're using, which is like organic to the next level. And uh, it's, uh, we're going to be using um, a method of building called super adobe. What are you, what are you laughing at? What's happening? The in the chat, chat? Listen, the chat is like honestly heartbroken right now. When you mention your boyfriend, they're like, oh my, oh my God, <laughs> puppy. They're like crying in the chat. Like I've never seen the chat so distraught over <laughs> over over something in my in my entire life yeah this is like the most distraught the chat's ever been yeah oh yeah. sorry guys they you broke their you broke their hearts right now right? they're like <laughs> boyfriend six years mexico house on the farm they're oh my god i thought i had a shot with Lynn. i was in the chat on the podcast i've been watching her instagram videos i thought she was gonna notice me poppy and, oh. uh, you know now they're uh, oh well man all right guys calm down guys there's no other women out there in the world don't worry poppies calm down you know it's, hey, it's okay i'm sorry calm down. i can't see the chat oh the chat's on uh, on the youtube chat oh he hello that's so funny drew just messaged me i'm throwing you under the bus again drew holy shit i didn't expect you to actually answer you crazy ass <laughs> yeah okay, okay so you're building the house on the farm in mexico uh yeah um, so I'm actually going there on Saturday because we have a workshop at the moment to learn about this building method. And it's basically using sandbags to build these super durable, uh, houses that will just last for like a thousand years. Like nothing can knock it down. No earthquake, no uh, hurricane, no floods. It's just so dense. The walls are so dense and then the structure, the way it's like built into domes, it looks super unique. I can't describe it without showing photos. Um, but I'll be posting lots of them. Um, so yeah, we're going to learn how to do it and we're going to build our own house uh, on this farm, like a total eco house. And we, the farm's going to be amazing. It's, I mean, it's a long-term, lifelong project, but we're going to have uh, produce, obviously, and then we're going to have Miss Carl. We're going to have a retreat space, accommodation, a restaurant, uh, an education center, and our, our little holiday home. I mean, I'm not going to live there forever. I could never live off the grid for good, but uh, just, you know, place to go and escape because that's what I'm talking about, balance, you know, the casino life and then... Farm life. Nature. It's a nice way to, to stay balanced. So your boyfriend, you met him playing uh, on the tournament circuit, or how'd you meet? Uh, his name's e Angel, correct? Yeah. Or mm -hmm. Angel is the proper Spanish. Word. Angel. My, hey, listen, I, I, I'm trying to be better with my uh, my Spanish and my Mexican pronunciation, so Angel. Angel. Uh, he's a poker star's uh, sponsor player now or before no, at some point? No, he was. Um, so, yeah, he, he used to be, and I used to travel around uh, Latin America and that's how we met. So I used to interview him uh, back when he was a sponsored pro. Um, but he doesn't play tournaments as much anymore. He's more of a cash game player. Um, now, yeah. He, he played he played um, cash games uh, previously too, right? Like maybe 2010, 11, something like that. I think he played, he was a cash game player, right? On, online? Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, yeah, I remember his screen name at the tables. I think he, I think it was Nolan, I don't think it was PLO, but yeah, I remember he had the, he had the, the, the the sponsor player there. So how did you guys meet? Uh, I used to interview him and I used to just see him on the circuit. And uh, it actually, it's a funny story. He, uh, I always thought he was cute, um, but I didn't know him that well, you know, and I would just see him and interview him for five minutes every couple months. And then uh, one time I was at home in Australia and he had a, like back then that poker stars had started their poker stars home games. And he was running a home game. And so I was like, I'm going to jump in this hot guy's home game. <laughs> and so I was in bed and I was sick and we were playing the tournament and we ended up getting heads up. And then, uh, and then he won. I came second. I think. I can't remember who won. I think it. But anyway. 
And so from that, we started like chatting in the chat box, and then it moved to Twitter DMs, and then uh, yeah, the rest was history. History. And then from then, we saw each other on um, the next uh, stop. I think we were in Sao Paulo, and then yeah, that was six years ago. So thanks so, to poker, it has brought so much joy to my life. <laughs> so via the Poker Stars home games. Wow, man, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. So you guys met in the home games, you get heads up, you guys play, then it goes from there, then it goes from there, and now six years later, you guys are, are getting an official farm together down in Mexico. That sounds like a pretty, pretty cool thing. Yeah, it's pretty, uh, it, it's pretty surreal when I, when I think about it, and it's mm -hmm. exciting, and I, I can't wait to get down there. I'm, I'm heading down next week to the farm, and yeah. Does, she, uh, cool. does he still play a lot of poker too, or is he, is he not as playing as much anymore? Yeah, he does. He plays, um, but yeah, mostly cash games. Um, yeah, down in Mexico and uh, plays a little. Actually, he was here playing at Commerce last week. He plays every now and again. But again, he's he's also kind of like me. Where he's concentrating on the farm at the moment because it's all just getting started. So there's a lot right. of the, the business side of things that have to get sorted. So he's got a bunch of other projects that he's working on as well that keeps that work-life balance going with the poker. Does he play the great game of Palo Noir? He does. Oh, my heart. All right, perfect. That's a great guy right there. <laughs> Not only speaks a little Spanish, hola, colomosa, papi, but also, as you mentioned, a hot Spanish guy, hot Mexican guy who plays poker. I'm like, PLO, I'm in. Like, I'm, I, I, I'm all about that, man. I don't know many Palo Noa players residing in Mexico at the moment. Actually, uh, what's that guy's name? No, I actually don't know many. I actually don't know many out there. But yeah, shout out to everybody in the chat here. I see some comments. I see a lot of good comments. Uh, it seems like the chat is very much enjoying Lynn. If you want to follow Lynn, check her out on Instagram. You can get up more of all the Lynn you'd ever wanted, Lynn Gil Martin. So what's your, what's your take on Instagram, Lynn? Because I'm pretty new to this. The whole Instagram poker world is kind of new to me. I joined about two months ago, a little over two months ago. What, what's, what do you think about Instagram? I, I'm, not, I'm still trying to figure this thing out. I know it's really popular, and I'm like way missing the boat here. I'm getting old. But what's like, what do you think about Instagram? I love it. I think you're doing a pretty good job being a freshie. You're doing very well, making all your content. I think it's great now that they've added the, um, I mean, <clears throat> Yeah, now that they've added the, the video elements, it, it's, it's fun because now not only is it photos, because I, I think it's so much more interesting. We're visual people, you know? Twitter can get a bit dry when it's just all text. So I like scrolling through the Instagram feed, seeing all the photos and videos. It was a bit kind of shocking when they totally uh, stole Snapchat <laughs> <laughs> and just merged into their app and just ripped it off. And at first I was like, hang on a minute, just out of the... the uh, the moral of it, I refuse to use it and they'll stay true to Snapchat, but sure enough, I was an asshole and, and it couldn't handle having all of the different uh, social media channels to keep up with. So I just like to be consolidated on Instagram. It's nice. Yeah, I mean, I think it's especially if you're, if, if you're doing a lot of different things, if you're trying to balance all these different things in your life, you're traveling a lot, you probably don't want to have these multiple different apps that you're trying to like open up and put this there, put this there and kind of with what you do and, and sort of everything you have going on, do you feel like Instagram is something that you, you think is important to marketing yourself or to, you know, so putting out your content or putting out anything like that out there to the world or do you sort of just like, Hey, I'm going to post this or I'm going to post that. Or is it like some sort of uh, strategy behind it? I think it's really important to have a strategy behind it. If you want to use it um, beyond just personal photo albums, you know? So if you, uh, like, you know, for you and I, where a lot of our work is online, I think it's it's super important to have intention behind the things that you post. Absolutely. it's it's We're in such a unique world now where we have our own uh, channels that we're broadcasting from and no longer are we dependent on having to uh, rely on just a big network to give us uh, or a media site to give us the avenue to, to reach an audience. You know, it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. So, um to be able to build our own audience and have our own channel uh, that we can publish whatever we want is, is, is pretty important today it, to do the things that we do. Yeah. But I mean, if you're just <clears throat> not interested in having a business online and want to post pictures of your dogs and your, and your kids and your food, go for it. <laughs> you don't have to have intention. You just want to share the love. Yeah. So what's your strategy on Instagram? Are you going to share it with us a little bit of it? What's my strategy? Uh, I just like it to, to be balanced, I don't know. I, I like. <laughs> Jeez, I don't know. How do, how do I explain it? Well, okay. So my whole thing, I've gone much more into the travel focus now lately because I used to be kind of all uh, health as well because I studied nutrition online and I am really interested in living a healthy life and like uh, 
and I used to have like an online uh, web series that I did with Poker News uh, called Stay Stacked. It was all about well-being for poker players, and I loved that. Like making that content um, was really interesting. It was basically just recording what I was learning because I was learning at the same time and I was interested. Um, and so, but yeah, then it was just kind of like this mash of healthy living and traveling and stuff. But lately, because I'm I'm focusing more on the travel. Um, that's what my Instagram's reflecting. So I think my Instagram really just reflects whatever I'm focusing on at the moment. Mm. I'm a, <laughs> I like to I like to ask other people that are doing Instagram, and I think if they think they're doing it well, I like to sort of see where they're coming from with it, what they're thinking about, and how they approach it. And that's how you learn is you ask people that are doing things good at it and figure out what they're thinking, and then you like you you take ideas or you sort of get in, take inspiration from them. So that's kind of, I'm obsessed. I'm like I'm not obsessed with it right now, but I'm obsessed with like the strategy behind it and sort of figuring out exactly how to utilize it properly and sort of the value because there's so much value in it just of having an audience on there in terms of doing any sort of work or working with companies or working with brands or expanding outside or having a product or having a service that I mean I don't know it sort of seems like pretty a pretty good thing to focus on so absolutely and and I think and you have to really make sure as well that the whole sort of feed in itself looks good together because that's the first impression it's kind of like uh, if you go into a shop or, you know, you see a bottle of wine or a book or whatever, what is it? What cover is it that makes you pick that book up and one that doesn't if it's not appealing visually? Um, you just, it has to be something that draws someone, uh, that draws someone to want to follow you. So you've got to like, yeah, you've got to think about everything that you're posting as a whole and does it and have like an idea of the brand and the overall feel that you want your uh, audience to feel, I guess. You know, if it wants to be like this calm and breezy kind of, sensation or if it's all like hardcore information or if it's quotes or if it's inspirational or if it's whatever bikini shots <laughs> whatever your market is hmm. bikini are those is that a part of that a part of your strat for the guys out there yeah, not a part the of my out, I mean, the girls out there too would probably enjoy that i don't know man they'd probably <laughs> i think anyone out there would like that <laughs> so what's kind of like what, what's your you know it feels like wpt that's your your main focus right now and then you have a lot of primary sort of secondary focuses with acting and with entrepreneurship and now with going to Mexico and and getting into that. Mm -hmm. So what would you say is sort of, I guess, the second thing behind WPT for yourself? Uh, I So for the last kind of year, last year had you asked me that, it would have been acting for sure. I was really focused on that. I was loving it because I always wanted to be an actor since I was a kid. Uh, it was always a dream of mine and I sort of just stopped following that uh, once I finished high school and went to college. Um, but then I was, I was like, I'm in LA, I'm going to get back into it and started going to classes and loved, uh, loved learning about that again. Cause I learned so much about myself taking acting classes. But now this year, um, I have focused, my focus has shifted to the farm. Like I just, whenever I get a chance, uh, a moment to myself between the traveling and the packing and everything at the moment, I'm like building the websites uh, and doing all the social media. I just love creating brands and that's, because marketing is my background. So um, that's just what I'm focusing on at the moment is creating the brand for the farm and getting down there and taking photos and creating content down there soon. So that's that would be number two. Hmm. Sounds kind of, it sounds really fun. You know, we were just talking, me and Joan were talking the other day and I said, we should go spend, we should go find people to go spend like three days with or four days with and like get into their lives and, and sort of just like see what their life's like, get a different perspective on life. Cause I, you know, I live in a alternate reality sort of thing in my own little world here. And we were talking about a farm was the first thing to go to. We're like, why don't we go to a farm and like live with some farmers that are doing the farm stuff and like just see what that life's like, like milk the cow or do all this kind of stuff. And I don't know, it seems like it would be just a different. Oh. What do you say? Come with us. <laughs> oh, man, I don't know. So I got this irrational fear about Mexico. I don't know what it is. Not yet. I, it just, I've heard so many stories down there, but then again, a lot of people go to Mexico all the time and, and it's perfectly safe down there. So do you have any sort of feelings like that? Or are you just like, everything will be fine there? No, I feel I have been to Mexico more than 20 times, maybe 30 times over the last six years. And I've never, ever felt unsafe. Um, I mean, yeah, there's there's all kinds of uh, the stories that you hear. I mean, a lot of that stuff is in the north of the country, um, you know, near the border. And, uh, you know, there are areas of the country that I would like never drive through or never go to. Um, but that's just like any country and any city. Every city has shady areas. I mean, LA is not very safe. <laughs> so, I mean, stuff go stuff's going on all the time in LA as well. So I just, I mean, 
really there's there's a risk anywhere. There's violence that happens anywhere, and I think you just got to be smart about um, where you go and um, keep yourself safe in that way. But then not live in fear. You know, not be naive, but not live in fear. And I just love it. When I go to Mexico, the people are amazing. They're so nice. They're so proud of their country and warm and welcoming and excited to have you there. And um, the food is awesome. And the, it's just such a, uh, especially Mexico City, it's such a creative city, um, at least in the, like the areas that, that, that we are in, like Condesa, Roma, um, uh, Polanco. I don't know if anyone's been to Mexico City. you got to go to those areas. It's just, I love it. I love it so much. I could talk about it all day. <laughs> There's no reason to be scared. Hop on a flight. Well, we got inspired to go to Russia. I think it was uh, last week or the week before we had Anatoly on the podcast. And now we're inspired to go to Mexico City. So, I mean, I don't know. I could finally put this Spanish that I've been uh, that I've been learning to use, Lynn. I'm very excited about that. And I actually find this a little bit, now that I think about it more, I find this a little bit shocking that you don't know Spanish because with how much you love Mexico City, like you can literally get Duolingo on your phone. and. Mm -hmm like just grind out a little like 30 minutes of Spanish a day so she on the road or you're on the plane I mean it like you no know, Spanish man I don't know how this hola colamos a papi right I, I don't know that's all I know really Margarita, <laughs> quesadilla, the mitta. like I don't know why why haven't you learned Spanish yet Lynn I, I'm I sure if Angel's watching right now he's fist pumping to what you're saying uh I have Duolingo on my phone I have Rosetta Stone I've got uh Pimslo this audio one my I just I sometimes just don't have the uh attention span whatever I don't know I can't I just can't focus and when I'm on a plane I'm like falling asleep I keep trying to go into it but it's just it's when I'm there and I'm immersed I think I'm someone who just likes to focus on what's in front of me or what I'm doing now and I don't know I, I it's it's lame of me that I don't speak Spanish for sure but I'm almost there like when I'm there you know I can like converse at a restaurant and order my meal and like say all these basic things, but I can't like have a proper conversation. Um, that's yeah. Well, yeah. But I reckon by Christmas, that's the, that's the promise I'm giving myself that I'll be able to converse. I feel like for people like, like myself and I think for yourself, you very much communicate uh, by words and communicate just by talking and sort of like going in depth into things. And I found the biggest disconnect for me just when I'm in different countries or talking to different people is that, you can't really do that when you don't understand their language and they don't understand English that much. And that's like one of the most frustrating things for me. Anytime I maybe on the, you know, meet a foreign girl or something like that, shout out to all the foreign girls out there. If I'm in a different country, it's just that, that, that lack of communication and disconnect is such a, is something I just. Well, you know. actually that's true. Um, and it's probably with dating, it would be very difficult. So I haven't experienced that part because Angel speaks English, but, um, what I have learned though is when you go to a country where people don't speak the same or you don't speak their language, um, you do realize that uh, you can still you can still understand them even without hearing the words that they're saying, like through body language, through tone, you know, the expressions on their face, um, and also just general human needs and and I don't know, and just and just general clues. It's it's kind of crazy. Like I'll often understand um, what Angel's mom is saying and she can tell me all kinds of stories about his childhood and I'll still kind of like you still sort of pick it up and like in just in when you're walking the street you still kind of understand like what's going on around you even though no one's speaking the same language with that which I think is fascinating and are they all do, do a lot of people down there look at you because they're you're a uh, and obviously you're, you're white and you have red hair I imagine in Mexico this is going to stand out and then if they start talking to you you got the accent so I'd imagine people are like they're probably enamored with you when you're walking around down there and when you start having a conversation with them <laughs> um, I am an alien. Yeah, Angel calls me an alien when I go to Mexico City because they don't see many people of my color. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I don't, like, <laughs> I don't know if they're enamored. They just stare at me like, what the hell is that? <laughs> I kinda, <laughs> one of the, actually, we went to a, a nightclub once and I'm like, I'm average height. I'm not a tall uh person in the US or in Australia I'm just average but in Mexico I'm 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 on the taller side and especially when I have like six, six inch heels on and we went mm -hmm. to a nightclub one time and uh we walked in and it was the craziest feeling because I, I I since I felt what it felt like to be a super tall person where I could see across the whole crowd and see the DJ booth in the far corner it was so surreal and at the time I was blonde and so all uh, of Angel's friends were calling me a uh, disco ball because they were like, I was like this white-haired disco ball in the middle of the dance floor. <laughs> <laughs> 
Dare I say GTO? I don't know, man. That sounds pretty. I've heard it saying about Columbia. All my uh, all my friends that go to Columbia, they're always like, man, you go down there. They got Gringo Tuesdays. You go there. It's crazy. I've, I don't know. I've just heard some out of line stuff happening down in. I don't know, man. What's uh, what's your upcoming tra uh, schedule plans for traveling? So you said you're going to Mexico and then which um, which WPT stops do you have coming up? Are you going to be going to the World Series of Poker? You know, what sort of your uh, upcoming months look like for yourself? Um, so I've got I'm going to Vegas tomorrow. We've got Tiger Jam tomorrow which is a WPT Foundation event. Ah, um, yes, okay, that's a Tiger Woods thing, correct? Yeah, to uh, raise some money for Tiger Woods Foundation, so that's every year in Vegas, which is so fun. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I'm heading to Mexico, we've got WPT 500 in LA, so I'm coming back for that. Uh, it's the first time we're having WPT 500 in LA, it's usually in Vegas, um, which we will have again in Vegas uh, late June, early July. So I'm in LA, I'll go back to Mexico, then I'll go to Vegas for WPT 500. What else have I got? I don't know. Because at the moment we're mid-season. So the season just finished in Florida and then season 16 will start again uh, at the end of July. I think. Yes, end of July, early August. So I'm kind of on my time off at the moment, which is why I'm packing up my place and trying something new. Mm. <laughs> when, is the, when is the India and China and when are, when are those things? Are those all later in the year? They're later in the year. I don't, I've forgotten the dates of India. Let me check. Um, but Uruguay, which is also, I'm so excited to go down there because, you know, I've because now that we're going down to South America, that's also extra motivation to learn Spanish. So um, we're going down to Uruguay in November. It'll be over my birthday, actually. It's like the first week of November. Uh, and I don't remember the dates of India. But yeah, we're all over the place. So you are definitely a professional, tra yeah, you, you travel an immense amount. What's, what's your tip for people out there who when they go to a new city and they, they want to go see it, but they don't know how to necessarily go explore it? I feel like myself, when I go travel sometimes, I just end up like sticking to one or two places or I stay in the hotel and work on my computer. I don't actually get out enough and go see. And I imagine with yourself, if you're an alleged world professional traveler, someone who can put that like it's number two there, you've got to have a pretty GTO approach to going out and visiting these cities and, and just getting the most out of them. Um, maybe, I hope so. My <laughs> focus, <laughs> I like to just wander around, um, <laughs> just create the mental map of the city as I'm wandering around aimlessly. But my focus when I'm traveling is food. I just love, like, I think a lot of people travel with a different focus if they love adventure or, um, I don't know, whatever, whatever it is that their, their hobbies are, um, or casinos, you know, but I love finding restaurants. Um, so when I when I arrive, I'll always try to find like the closest juice bar or healthy place so I can stay uh, um, stay healthy because it's easy to just eat like crap when you're traveling. Um, so that's kind of my focus is to find because I because usually if you if you look for the really good restaurants, they're always in the really good areas. So then it's mm -hmm. usually a good indication of the good places to be and sort of start from there. And then once you've established those places, then you can figure out to branch off out of there. So. I think it's a pretty good plan because I don't do that. I normally just like go outside, wander around, and <sighs> I'm a fish, man. I'm a definitely a fun player, world traveler. What's your What's your favorite place you've been to? Uh, is it Amsterdam or is it someplace else? Um, oh, it's so hard to answer that question because I I really do enjoy almost everywhere I go. Um, I mean, Amsterdam is a new favorite. I had high expectations and I they got blown out of the water. I really loved it. Um. One of my favorite places in the world to go is, uh, is Tulum in Mexico. <laughs> I'm always raving about Mexico. But Tulum, have you ever been there? I have never been to Mexico before. It's, oh yeah, of course, don't, you just said that. So it's about 45 minutes south of Playa del Carmen. Um, obviously a bunch of poker players live down there, so I'm sure a lot of them would know Tulum, but it's just kind of like this hippie, kind of eco-friendly uh, getaway. Where it's actually quite big. There's like 200 hotels or something in resorts, but when you're there, you feel like, your resort is the only one there. Um, it's you know you step out of the you step out of your room and your feet are in the sand straight away and uh, yeah it's just yeah it's just a, a magical place. I also really love Montreal. Have you been there? I have not been to Montreal. I've heard a a lot of good things about Montreal. I know they have a bunch of poker up there. That's always happened, and all the Canadians always say I got to go check it out. But I have never been to Montreal as well either. I think, I think you've been to, I think you've been to, I've been to some place around the world. I used to live in Australia too. I know you're from Australia. You did? Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I lived, I lived in Sydney. Oh, I'm from Melbourne. 
Yeah, I um, and I was telling Jonah this. I so I met a girl. I've told the story before on the pod, but I met a girl in Spain, Australian girl, and uh, you guys, you guys actually remind me of each other. So it was kind of a, uh, it was a funny thing about the podcast. I'm like, man, when she like, so we saw, we were listening, we watched a video that you had on uh, Instagram. I was like, man, she talks just like Stephanie, and I was like, that was like sort of reminded me of my Australian times, which were had their highs and they had their lows, no doubt about it. So Aww. yeah, I used to live there. I moved there. I lived in the downtown there, right by the the Harbor Bridge and the Opera House, and I, I enjoyed it. It was fun. It was fun, but out of line. And uh, it, <laughs> well, it, it out of line. <laughs> well, it was out of line. I I thought oh, I come on. I told you about my Amsterdam story. Tell us the out of line. <laughs> <laughs> well, so when I initially went there, um, I was playing a lot of poker online, a lot of high stake stuff, and I went through a downswing. You know, a, down, a little downswing where I was mixing fun with partying with poker and. Didn't go very well, so I went there. I wasn't in the best of spirits. And then me and my girl, we we split up because I was uh, terrible to date. But I met some new people there, Lynn. And let's just say that I embraced the party that Sydney had to offer, and I turned my place into the premier after hours place for people to go to. And uh, it got out of line. So we were doing that like uh, three, four, five times a week, just having people at my place. And you could play the music as loud as you wanted to. The no one would hear ever. The neighbors, it would, the sound never went through, and we had the sick balcony overlooking uh, the Harbor Bridge and the water out there in downtown Sydney. And, wow, um, mm -hmm. that sounds exhausting. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a week. <laughs> <laughs> we were out of line. It was out of line. I was out of line. You know, I like I'm, I I don't I, I I don't know. I don't know. I was out of line. That's, that's it. I, have you uh, have you like been down, been to Sydney before? You been to Bondi Beach and and sort of checked yeah. out Sydney. I love it. I could easily live in Sydney. I mean, I'm I'm more partial to Melbourne because I'm from there. Um, but Sydney's beautiful, especially Bondi. Yeah, Bondi seems like one of the most beautiful places in the world. It seems like Australia has a lot of really really beautiful places down there. Oh my gosh, did you make it to Byron Bay? I didn't. I don't think so. I don't. I don't quite remember some of the things. So I don't think. I don't think I went to Byron Bay. You would remember. It's about three hours drive from Sydney. I think maybe more. I definitely did not leave much of Sydney, except on a random bus one time I found on a site called In The Mix. They said there's a party bus going to a secret location. So I said, fuck it. I'm going on the bus. I went on the bus to a secret location and actually could have been there. I literally have no idea where we went, but that was the one time I left. Sydney. Yeah, I don't lie. Like I said, man, I definitely... <laughs> Definitely out of line. Man. Let me give some shout outs, man. We got a lot of people out there in the chat. What's going on, guys? It's good to be back podcast. And you you wanna you gotta give a shout out, Lynn. You wanna give a special uh special words to anybody out there might be watching? Um uh, <laughs> hi mom. <laughs> I don't know. She, she could be watching. Shout out to Lynn's mom. What's what's your mom's name? What's your mom's name? Laura. It was her birthday the other day on Mother's Day. Shout out to Laura, Laura Gilmartin. Shout out to you. Laura Happy with an M. Mora, Mora, yeah. Mora Gilmar. Is she does she look like you? She has the red hair. Is uh, what she similar? I'm the only redhead. So my mom always used to joke that the milkman had red hair. Everyone else is. She's everyone's brunette. I mean, she's blonde, but she dyes it. <laughs> everyone's brunette in my family. Huh? I'm like gray redhead. My cousin is a redhead too. It's a dying recessive gene. We're a dying breed. Got to mm. breed the redheads. You're like a. You're like a, I don't know, you're like a, a world treasure. They gotta, they have to create more redheads as much as they can, I guess, that they're out in the world. So right. <laughs> make, make children, man. Come on. You gotta go down there in Mexico, make some kids down there. Let me give some shout outs, man. I got some people out there. I want to say what's up to Joshua Ruiz in the chat. I want to date Lynn's mom. Calm down, Josh. Don't get out of line here, man. Chris <laughs> Roberts, we got in the chat. What's up, puppy? <laughs> peanut butter, man. You know, I love me some peanut butter. What's happening? Peanut butter. Marco Van Sparkle, Charisma 91, Pazman TV, Highland. Great interview. That's probably that one's for you. Jamie Feel. Who else we got? NDZ, Kevin Bacadati. Who else, man? WPT, shout out to WPT. Shout out to Drew Romano. Shout out to, uh, shout out to, who else? The WPT. There's a lot of, a lot of people for WPT kind of, who are, do you guys have like, um, do you have like good friends in poker that you, when you go to these stops, you always kick it with, or do you have like a crew? Do you got a squad? Like who's in your group when you go travel that you like to hang out with? I love the crew that I work with. I love them. And and Amsterdam was actually so much fun because of the people that uh, that I was with, like Drew and, and Caitlin and Andrea and Romance and, and Max. Romance and Max are from the uh, WPT European uh, office. Um, yeah, so when I mean, when I'm traveling, I really love all of the, the people that I work with. The Royal Flush girls are a lot of fun, or the Royal Flush crew, because we have a guy now, Brendan. Um, 
And yeah, but then it just depends on what stop, like who the locals are. Like when I go to Vegas, I love to see Sarah, Sarah Herring um, and Christy on when she's in town. I love catching up with them. Um, yeah. Just mm. uh, that, how cool is that too, that poker has, allows us to, to travel and, and, and to meet people from all over the world that no matter what stop you go on, you just catch up with. You've got friends all over the planet. It's crazy. And then social media allows us to stay in touch. I mean, times are just insane. It, it excites me so much. <laughs> oh yeah, it's it's certainly incredible. I think about that too. And if I any city I could go to now, I know people there. I know of people. I have friends there or acquaintances there. It's it's crazy, kind of what poker. I mean, now I'm talking doing a podcast with with someone who's from Australia, lived in Ireland. It's like it's crazy, right? Like that that poker sort of brings all these different people together. And yeah, no, I know. I mean, I love the poker world. Obviously, it's it's that's certainly one of my. Fa- I mean, no, there's some drama too. But you mentioned the Royal Flush Girls. There was that whole thing where like. People were upset. There was a Royal Flush girls. Like, why is there not the Royal Flush guys? And then you guys added a guy. You know, what was kind of your thoughts on that whole situation with uh, when that went down? Um, I mean, I think it's cool to 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 have added the guy. Uh, the Brendan is awesome, and uh, they're taking like a more of a focus on on health and fitness, and they have this role to sort of to create online content that's similar to what I was saying that I, I was uh, producing at one point to give advice for poker players to stay uh, fit and healthy. So uh, I think it's great. I think it's a great natural transition uh, forward to, to have a bit more of a role uh, with the content creation. So that's good. Yeah, I, I, it seems like WPT is going to go, we talked about this earlier, it's going to be going a lot more content creation. I think it's just like makes sense, especially when you have good production, you have uh, people that are good on camera, if you have beautiful people that are beautiful on camera. I mean, I don't know. It just seems like why not utilize that and why not you know, showcase these different places you go to, as you mentioned, some very beautiful places going to Uruguay, you're going to be in India, going to be in China. I mean, even Vegas, Vegas, you know, we've seen Vegas, sure, but there's so much out there to still be seen in Vegas. I think it's just like a no brainer to, to really capitalize on that and show people that are poker fans exactly what the world has to offer out there. Yeah, absolutely. So I, uh, I love creating content, so I'm going to create as much of it as I can Mm -hmm. (laughs) until people stop watching (laughs) and I'll still keep making it. I don't know. I, I, I like the videos on Instagram. Like I said, I just, they're all, they're like funny. They're, they're, they're creative. They got nice lighting. They got nice. I'm like, I don't know, man. It's. Thank you. <sighs> Same actors... with yours. I'm, I'm loving yours. Yours are funny. The playground. I gotta, I gotta try that. I haven't tried the playground setting. Um, probably, <laughs> I mean, listen, I, we walked around the neighborhood. Jonah's like, Hey, why don't we do something here? And I said, I got an idea. Let's do this. And then that happened to be at a playground, but Maybe not the best place. I got to be honest. Maybe not the best place to do videos. A playground. You're like on a slide. People are maybe thinking some. I don't. You know. So maybe not the GTO spot to shoot in the future. But it happens to be close by. Shout out to the playground. Shout out to Connie. My friend Connie actually uh, lives there. Uh, Connie's a green dinosaur that I've known. <laughs> I've known for about 14 years. So it's uh yeah. I love Connie a lot. I just I don't know, man. I love Connie. Let me check out. Uh, <laughs> Guys in the chat, man, give me some questions for Lynn. I'm sure you guys have some questions. No, she's probably not going to marry you. She's got to calm down, guys, in the chat, man. Is this what comments are like all day for you? Like when people comment on your Instagram and they they hit you up on Twitter? I have people are friendly, but I've actually noticed your followers are very friendly. (laughs) So shout out to all your followers when you tweeted that I was coming on here. There was some very uh, nice, positive responses. So thanks. Are most of the followers mean out there? I feel like I I don't know. No, I think I'm, I'm pretty lucky with that. I mean, I think everyone, I mean, yeah, I mean, sometimes you get a hater, but haters are always going to hate. You're always going to get something. What do they say? What do they say to you? Exactly. I, I don't, what would they like say to you? Like, oh, you're, 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 you're too Australian. I don't know what they say. I don't even know what they would say. I don't know. Once they saw actually a comment saying that my accent was like nails scratching down a chalkboard or something like that. Oh, like, oh, whatever. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't like to focus on the negative though. Um, it's ugh, whatever. I think it's just too energy sucking to focus on that. So what would I say? Well, then they'll just, oh, I don't even want to give them whatever. Let's not talk about that. Negative. Mm, I, I like some of the comments, man. They're fun. What, the negative ones? The weird ones, man. I like the weird guys out there. The negative ones, you know, you just ban them or something like that. But the weird comments are the ones I enjoy the most when they say some like inventively weird shit. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> there's, yeah, there's been some, but I don't even want to repeat it. It'll yeah, go be. Jonas says top three things to do in LA. The kid loves LA. He loves it so much. What do you feel like the best best three things to do out there are? Ooh. Um hiking. There's awesome hiking spots. 
there's like Runyon Canyon and Griffith Park, um, which is me. And then out by the beach, you've got like Malibu and Pacific Palisades. Uh, there's so much nature all nearby, which is amazing. Uh, the food, there's heaps of great restaurants. Mm. Gracias Madre is probably my favorite. Add that to your list. Gracias Madre. Fancy that. <laughs> God, I'm really sounding like this crazed, obsessed Mexican lover. I guess I am. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. You know, <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. What about, what, what's number three? What do you think is uh, third on the list? Number three uh, would be go see a comedy show. There are some great comedians and it's, it's a cheap, fun night out and you'll see like a lineup of 10 comedians in one night and laugh your, till your stomach is sore and have cheap drinks and it's a great night. Jamie Delama asks, ask her who are who ask her who she thinks is the best Australian poker player. Oh. Joe Hashem, right? Joe Hashem, probably. Yeah, I mean Joe Hashem's our number one for sure. He's a legend, man. He has the best quote in, in a video I found. I found this video from like nine or ten years ago. He says, Pot Limit Omaha is a very dangerous game. And like <laughs> I a truer quote has never been spoken in my entire life by anyone I've ever heard. It's just like Yes, Joe Hashem. Pot Limonois is a dangerous game. I agree. I it's just. It's, I love uh, your uh, attempt at the accent, by the way. <laughs> was, that not, was that not very good? It's hilarious. Pot Limonois is a very dangerous game. That's bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not good. You sounded a bit more Indian uh, than Australian, maybe. Man, I, anytime I try to sound Indian, I sound like Chinese. And then when I decided to sound British or French, I sound Chinese too, man. So. <laughs> Oh, well, man. All right, guys. At least I try. Listen, the only way you get better at accents, guys, in the chat is if you try, okay? If you don't try, you're not going to get better. So I'm going to keep trying and keep being terrible. And uh, eventually in two, three, five, seven, ten years, I'm going to get better at it. So uh, let's see. What's I'm this? I'm working on my American accent. Let's hear it. You got one? Hear it? Okay. Well, ask me a question. What's it like having an American accent, Lynn? It's interesting. I feel like people understand me more. <laughs> <laughs> How was that? I don't know. I got to hear more. You got to hear more? I got too small of a sample size. Okay. okay. Well, when I speak with my Australian accent, I have to repeat myself like three times often because people don't understand me. So when I speak like an American, wow. you just get it right away, right? Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> Thanks. Wow. I'm kind of confused. I mean... You saw, yeah, I think when a lot of people do the, um, they do American accents, they definitely do the more LA-ish kind of like valley girl type of accent. It seems like uh -huh. when, when, when like any Australian or any British person does it. Mm -hmm. So I sound like a valley girl, is that what you're saying? Um, pretty LA, yeah. Maybe not valley girlish, but definitely LA, which makes sense. You live in LA. It makes sense why you'd sound. And you're in the, you know, in the entertainment industry too. So I'm sure you interact with a lot of people and I'm sure you have to always work on your voice. And that's probably the American voice that you're around the most out there. Mm -hmm. For sure. Uh, let's see. Movie Maker says, how many weeks a year does Lynn travel for the WPT? Probably way too many. Uh, yeah, a lot. I mean, it would probably be less than half of the year. Maybe like a third of the year I'm actually like on the road for WPT. And then in between, I'm adding personal trips to home to Australia or uh, down to Mexico. Hi, hi, hi. How do you uh, how, how do you feel like I, I obviously you must enjoy that, but I I know for myself I'm traveling. I, you, like you're constantly breaking up your systems when you go to places. Your habits are constantly being adjusted. Your diet kind of can go to crap, and sort of everything else you're working at can go to the wayside when you're doing so much of the stuff. So how do you feel like you handle being in new places so often? Uh, good food. I think that's like the ultimate. Like and making sure that you get sleep. Uh, and uh, when you arrive in a new country, don't go to sleep until the sun goes down. You know, like wait until that night just to get set on the right uh, time zone, the right schedule. But eating well is so important. Like I don't drink sodas. Um, I make sure I try and get juices or smoothies and um, just eat a lot of vegetables and get a lot of uh, nutrients. And I think that's what's helping me. And I... I might take some supplements sometimes. I carry like echinacea and things like that if I'm feeling under the weather, if I've been traveling too much. Um, but yeah, just staying healthy. You can't eat packaged junk and sodas and you'll just end up, you won't be able to do it much what was the, What was the thing you said um, to stay healthy that you drink? The youth, well, the take it when you feel sick? Oh, echinacea. 
or olive leaf extract. They're two amazing uh, supplements that you can take, uh, vitamins that you can take that help you help your immune system. Not like constantly, you just take it like if you're starting to feel, if you're like preparing for a big trip or um, if you're starting to feel under the weather, I'll take them and, you know, if I feel like a cold is coming on, it doesn't. And yeah, it's pretty good to help you get, overcome any illnesses, sicknesses. That sounds pretty good for people out there. I mean, for myself, that I think that's something pretty good. Uh, June Yun, I am not going to say his name right. Yun Yamadehos says, has she ever considered any jobs outside of poker? Um, I've had, I, I mean, I've had a, some random jobs like before this. I, well, in acting, I guess acting's outside of poker. I shot a, a, a scene in a movie, my first movie, uh, just a few months ago. What movie? I'll give you one guess where it was. El, Mexico. Mexico. <laughs> Mexico. Yeah, yeah, Mexico, Mexico, definitely Mexico. <laughs> um, and that was cool. So I felt like I kind of ticked off that, uh, that box of um getting my first acting role which was cool so that's a job outside of program let me get this straight like i gotta, I gotta say this again so <laughs> you don't know spanish i don't understand how this is possible i don't i don't get like your favorite restaurant mexican restaurants your favorite you <laughs> shot a mexican movie you're moving to mexico you're second far everything mexican you love mexican people you love mexican guys you love the culture down there but you don't know spanish it just <laughs> i i blows my mind right now it just really does i can't i can't believe it i know yeah. oh my god can we make a prop bet where you need to learn Spanish in I'm not, set time? I'm not having a prop bet with you because <laughs> you, know, you always win them, right? Aren't you mm -hmm. like that? That is just the worst decision to ever make to do a prop bet with you. But I have promised mm -hmm. myself uh, that by Christmas, I will be fluent. So we'll see. So by Christmas, you're going to be fluent in Spanish. At least to be able to like converse. Write that, down. Write that down, Jonah. Fluent in Spanish. Oh. <laughs> by December. Okay. When we're going okay. to bring this back up here. I hope so. I mean, just for the sake of Mexico, I hope that you can. So to test it, are we going to do a podcast in Spanish? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 no. The extent of my Spanish is, um, I make up my Spanish line. I'm just going to be honest with you. I make it up. <laughs> I, do. I, I make up the words. And when people that speak Spanish, they say, what are you saying? I say, oh, I just make up my, I make my own language up. <laughs> it's the Joe Ingram language of love. It's it's a language <laughs> of something, that's for sure, man. It's definitely a language of something. Uh, C, C. Anya says, I don't know if we can ask this question. Feminists are upset, but who is your favorite female player, C. Anya asks? My favorite female player? Oh. Um, I don't have favorites. I'm such a non... I don't, I'm not even going to have bridesmaids in my wedding one day. I'm not one to like pick favorites. But favorite female... Um, let's stick with the Aussies. I have to say Jackie Glazier. She's an amazing mm. poker player. Jackie Glazier. She yeah. was on uh, World Series of Poker coverage, I believe. Uh, she had a lot of coverage one year, correct? Uh, she did. She did really well. And she uh, uh, came one time, I remember we were railing her uh, final table and she, she came second. Uh, I can't remember what the event was, but that was a fun night. That was so much fun to just... Uh, scream someone on and cheer someone on and yeah i was so proud of her it was great were, were you guys saying aussie 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 oi 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 at the final table for her absolutely <laughs> we're saying all kinds of things <laughs> <laughs> i know that who knows what that could mean man i don't even know i'm trying to uh, that's, that's an interesting question do you have a favorite male poker player potentially out there do you have someone that you i think mine i think mine is um I think mine's gonna be uh we gotta go either Doug, 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 Doug's my favorite poker player. Doug, Doug's my favorite Aww. poker player. But he's my friend, so I gotta go with Doug. Or Fedor, Fedor too. I like Fedor a lot. So we'll go with Doug or Fedor. Yeah. I like him a lot too. I'd have to go with this uh Mexican player. His name's on Helgian. <laughs> you know what? Great guy that he uh, you know, cash game player, plays the great game of Potlam in Omaha. I mean, I got I got absolutely no I as I think that's a great choice. I think that's a fine <laughs> choice. Beautiful man, as we've established, right? Beautiful man. He is inside and out. He lives up to his name. He's an angel. Oh, wow, man. Isn't that, cute? Isn't that mushy? Listen, guys, you need to get someone that calls you an angel. If your girl ain't calling you an angel, if she's not, <laughs> if she's not hyping you up like this, man, you need to find a new girl. <laughs> is that good advice? I actually don't know if that was good advice. Is that good or bad advice? What do you think? Uh, that's decent. I mean, you, you, you know, she doesn't have to be publicly doing it, but she's going to make you feel that way. Both. <laughs> making each other feeling that way.
you know, pump each other up. You gotta lift each other up and feel loved and appreciated from your partner. Absolutely. Add that to your book. Yeah, have you seen my yeah, have you have you have you seen the book I'm gonna be writing? My second yeah. book. Lynn, I'm an author. I can't believe it. I got my second book. We just started research on it. Are you excited yeah. for are you excited for it? Uh yes, sure. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what content you <laughs> you come up with. Well, I got it. So here's my. So first of all, I put this tweet out, guys. I said I'm gonna in one year. I got one year to write a book. I'm gonna give away ten thousand dollars to one person who retweets it, and the book is gonna be about what women wish men knew about sex, and like a book about sex. And now some people thought like I'm saying I'm a professional at this. First of all, no, I don't know. I, I'm I'm learning. I don't know much, but I'm gonna be doing interviews, case studies, asking people all around the world exactly what you know what women wish men knew. And so my strategy, Lynn, is going to be, I'm going to just set up conversations with women from all over the world. I'm just going to talk with them, write things down, maybe make some, I don't know. Uh, that's my plan. And I think in one year, I'm going to be able to do it. Amazing. I love it. Well, good luck. That'll be a fun project. I'm sure you'll learn a lot for yourself. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing, right? Not only do I get to learn something, learn a lot, uh -huh. but I get to write another book. I get to put that book out there. I get to potentially help men around the world get better at things like this yeah share the love share the learning that's all i'm trying to do lena this is for the people honestly this is for other people it's not for myself you know it's not for me it's for other people mm -hmm. so it is i mean that's not true but uh jamie says who is the funniest poker player she has interviewed what's a funny who's the funniest poker player i've interviewed yeah okay um daniel negrano is pretty hilarious he always has me laughing who else? You're pretty funny, but I haven't interviewed you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Let's go with you. Go with me. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm trying to think about who the funniest person I've had on the podcast before is. Um, probably one of the Russians. Those Russian people are funny, man. There's Those guys are just like, they're very, have you ever had a conversation or did some sort of interviews with some of the Russian guys? Yeah, they, they're, their sense of humor, it's... uh. It is unique, right? It's like very direct and dry. Um, and yeah, hilarious. Yeah. Luke Shorts, never mind. Sorry. I, I, listen, Nick, you're right. I don't know. I forgot my, I don't know. I forgot Luke. I agree. Luke, you're right. It's Luke Shorts. Luke Shorts is ridiculously funny and out, very out of line. And <laughs> yeah, I, I totally forgot about Luke. I'm sorry. Shout out to Luke. Luke's probably the funniest person I think I've had a conversation with. So do you have like, a, I guess you don't really do much, much interviewing anymore, right? Not really, yeah, not as much as I used to. Um, I still do a little bit. Uh, I'll, like, I'll interview players when they get the heads up, but um, yeah, definitely not like the old days. Alpha 8, I did a bunch. Um, sort of like sideline ones. And uh, those guys were always hilarious. Like one time, Bill Perkins uh, prop betted Sorrel Mitzi to come and pull Antonio Spendiari's pants off while I was interviewing him and literally pulled everything off. Mid interview. <laughs> that was funny. So that was the end of my interviewing career. <laughs> yeah. huh. Did you have some sort of when you when you do interviews? Obviously, like I I don't necessarily think of myself as an interviewer. I think of more as I have a conversation with people. Yeah. But do you have like what sort of when you go into it? Like what's what are you sort of thinking? Are you trying to get something out of it? Or are you trying to like you're trying to bring something out of the person? Or you know do you have like a like a approach you have going into it? No, I think it's actually similar to you. And I think that's the more organic approach. I think that's what the audience sort of enjoys more, right? Where it's just more of a conversation and it's a bit more organic. I mean, obviously, if it's uh, a situation, um, if there's a topic to hit, of course. But I think having just the relaxed conversation where it flows is uh, the best way because then everyone's relaxed and it's not so formal and it's, I feel like it's easier to watch. Yeah, I've done a couple like on camera stuff with when I've done like a little bit of stuff. Like it's just so weird. I don't know. For me, it's just like, so how was like, how do you feel making it to the final table? Or it's like, it's all these really generic questions. And it makes sense why all these sideline type reporters for sports, it, like the questions are just very blind and basic. But I don't think it really like tells much, doesn't really add too much to things. It's it just to me, it doesn't seem like that. But like, it is hard too because you're so limited with TV, you're so limited with time. Mm -hmm. So we have the beauty of time with the podcast. We can just sit here and and just chat for two hours but uh on tv you've probably got 45 seconds and so you've just got to get that bite that you need and so you've just got to ask like these direct specific questions and not go off of it and and so that does kill conversation it's very uh rigid but 
Um, that's the beauty of editing. You can allow the conversation and then pull the nugget out of it. Not true. What's, what's kind of, you know, a conversation, right? Do you have like, what, what's your sort of go to, like maybe, I don't know if it's strategy or something like that. When you think about a good conversation, what do you think makes a good conversation? Um, I don't know. I think just being, uh, being relaxed. I don't, I don't know if I have a strategy though, because everyone is so different, right? But the best conversation happens when uh, someone isn't nervous about the camera and the light being in their face which is hard. I mean, if you're not used to it and you've got this big light stuck in your face, it's hard to just sort of loosen up and you can, you can get a bit stiff. So the best conversations come when things are a bit more at ease. Um, yeah, I don't know, but I don't, I guess I don't really have a strategy. Just being prepared, being prepared and listening. That's also so important. Um, always listening because you can, if you've got like a set five questions that you have to hit and you're, fixated on it as an interviewer to make sure you hit the questions, then you can often miss a golden nugget that was just delivered in one of the answers because you're like, okay, next question is this, next question is this. So you kind of like nod and smile and move on. But then the viewer was like, no, why didn't you follow up on that? Um, so I think listening is key, being prepared and, and listening. Yeah, I think it's, it's definitely can be challenging for people when they're like, when you, when you say something and you have these like, strict like gu guidelines like you mentioned and it's really hard sometimes also to be quick on your feet when someone says an answer like yeah. you're trying to you know put that into your mind and then process it and then put out something you also want to sound good or you want to sound intelligent you don't want to be sound like a you don't want to sound like a dork you don't know what you're talking about a lot of times so a lot of people do so if i for me if i say something like that you know i i'm just like whatever it, it's, it's going to happen but yeah i think that listening even in a conversation like this or just like a regular world conversation too I think the listening is certainly one of the most important things and really just taking in what they say and then responding to what someone says rather than they say something heartfelt and you're like, okay. And then like, that's it. And you move on. It's like, well, you know, someone opens up to you and they're vulnerable with you and then they tell you something and you sort mm -hmm. of just, you know, that, I think that's a big part of conversations that that's the most important thing I've learned from doing the podcast is just to really listen to what someone says, mm -hmm. find a way to become genuinely interested in it. And then, respond to what they say and, and sort of acknowledge what they say and maybe add some insight to it. Totally. And I feel like, I don't know if it's, it's, if it's an LA thing or if it's just a general human thing. Um, but I feel like lately it's hard to find people who can do that, who do just listen. I think uh, people are so just stuck in their heads that they're not, uh, it's just like one way conversation. And then if you do open it up or if you do say something, and then they take that as a segue to then go back to talking about whatever it is that's on their mind. It's like, oh my God, <laughs> it's so hard to find people who do actually just listen and pay attention. And um, I think that's, that, I think that is, a, uh, it's a in, priceless sort of way to give to someone is, is to listen. I also think with what you do too. So you do a lot of different things for a living and that you're into that are very unique. So I, I often think that, when you talk about the things you might be doing, most people want to understand and want to respond to it. Like one, they don't want to sound like an idiot. Two, they just like don't know what to say oftentimes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I feel like there's two schools thought. One guy is like, oh, I, like what person is they want to talk about what they're doing when you say something. And then another people like, they literally don't know what to say. You're like, I'm going to go, I travel the world with WPT and we do this stuff. And they're like, that sounds awesome. Like, uh, but I don't know what to say to you, right? Or and it's, it seems like yeah. I think with people like that is you sort of try. I mean, I try to do is I try to hit on these like common things that everyone enjoys. So traveling, you know, mm -hmm. that's one thing everyone wants to travel, right? Everyone loves traveling. So with certain people that might not understand the depth of different things that I do, I'll just talk about traveling. Or I'll talk about very simple, basic things, sports or books or reading or even like entertainment sort of thing like that. And mm -hmm. I think that is something that I've noticed really works out with some people when they simply like don't necessarily know like you're like oh you like make videos you're gonna go to a farm in mexico like what does that mean you know like they like, it's just it's hard to understand what that really means totally yeah you're right so basically you're saying i'm a bitch and <laughs> we're not having the patience no, I'm kidding. i mean listen i certainly don't have <laughs> i just don't i i stop i kind of stop talking a lot when i meet people different people i just listen i just ask questions i just li i don't say anything i'm not like putting myself i just like you tell me all you got to tell me, Steve. All right. Like I'll, I'll ask you questions. I'm good at the questions. I'm good at listening. I take, I take away a lot of things from any conversation I have. So I just listen. I don't say anything about myself though, because. <laughs> Cause your life is so fabulous. You don't want to uh, brag about it. Um, no, I don't think that's true. <laughs> I, don't think that's, I don't know. I think there's a lot more people out there living some pretty, pretty fabulous lifestyles out there. So. 
C. Anya says, what is the best, C. Anya says, what is the best answer you've ever received in an interview? For you. Oh. Oh. Um, <laughs> my favorite is when people just get really emotional and cry. That's always my favorite. If, if we're in an interview and uh, they're opening up and vulnerable, like they've just won a tournament or they're heads up for a tournament or, you know, they've just made a huge achievement in their life. Um, and you see that emotion, whether they cry or not. I love that. I think that's always, that's always my favorite. I like to watch dudes cry. <laughs> huh. You like to watch people cry. Okay. <laughs> Is that weird? Um, no. no. I never thought about that. I don't know. I hate when girls cry around me personally, but normally it's not in like a, not in like Enjoy. a cry. Tearfully. Yeah, sorry. I mean, happily cry. Oh, because they're not happily crying typically. Or, yeah, they're crying because like something's going down. So yeah. They're so, about, they just won life changing money. They just won like a WPD title or they just, you know, or they heads up for it. That's it. They, and their lives just changed in the most amazing way. And uh, seeing, seeing that emotion because it doesn't always happen. You know, people are ecstatic. But then when you see them actually like brought to tears, um, it's pretty moving. Yeah. I think uh, I had one person, I did some DFS streams and uh, an old poker player named Eric Crane, he won a million dollars on the sh on the show with me. And that was like an amazing feeling. I was like, wow. I was like, this is crazy. And also a couple weeks before that, a guy was winning a million dollars, like a regular guy from Pittsburgh. Last play of the game, guy caught a pass. He lost 800,000. He didn't lose 800,000. He went from 100,000 or a million to 200,000. And I was like, I was like devastated inside. So I like can't imagine you like get to see these people on a consistent basis and you get to feel the emotion that they have when they go through these things. Like, I mean, I don't, that, that's gotta be a pretty cool feeling just to yeah. be there with them while they do that. And now when they start crying and they cry happy tears of joy, then I can certainly understand just the. Uh, yeah, you can't yeah. help but be affected by it in a great way. I mean, we get affected by uh, the people around us and seeing someone win and like seeing their family erupt and, and everyone just also supportive and ecstatic. It's just such, how could you not love and thrive off of that environment? So I'm pretty lucky to be around that all the time. Note to self, be around people who are crying happy tears of joy more often. I think that's what my, uh, what my thing's going to be here. So Lynn, <laughs> if people, so what can people, uh, what can people expect kind of from you? Can they, they go on Instagram, they follow you. Can they going to be putting out some more videos for them maybe, or some more, some more unique content for them that they can go on there. Cause I know I'm sure they, they, they want a lot of Lynn. That's all I know, man. These <laughs> love the women, the women, it's not, they just, they, they love it. I, I feel like they're, uh, I haven't really heard anybody say many bad things about you in my entire like poker existence. Everyone's like Lynn Gilmartin. I love her so much. She's just so this, she's so all this stuff like that. I've always heard good things about you. That's so nice. Thank you. And same for you. You're so nice. You're so good at what you do. You're so funny and you love the game. You're passionate about it and you lift people up and you listen. <laughs> Thank you. But what's coming next for me? I don't know. I'll just keep creating what I'm creating. So yeah, there'll be plenty more videos. Um, there'll be plenty more photos. There'll be plenty more content. I'm on Instagram the most. Are you going to be, in, you're going to be in Vegas. You said for WPT 500 yeah. at the Aria. Uh, it's at MGA. Oh yeah. Well, yes. So I'll be at uh, WPT 500 at the Aria. Uh, that's, uh, late June, early July. And, um, I think the final table is July 4th for that one. And there's a bunch of day ones. Um, and, but immediately tomorrow I'm going to Vegas for Tiger Jam. So, uh, there'll be stuff from that. And then the, but there's also a WPT 500 in LA, which starts, uh, next week. So and when we're in Vegas that. together, we're gonna, we're gonna record some, we're gonna make some videos for, uh, for Instagram. Yeah. And uh, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, Jonah's in. He well, he's ready. Yeah, I know. We're gonna we're we're gonna make the sickest content in Vegas. Yes! Right oh my gosh, we're gonna put your acting skills to test. I I fucking hate doing those things like where that you have a script and you got to read it like ten times. It's just like how can you possibly capture the passion and energy that you have to say for something ten times when you have to keep repeating it? I don't know how they do it. I don't know how actors and actresses can possibly read something twenty five times with like the same emotion the first couple times. It just, it's I, my, it's crazy. It's pretty, it's pretty exhausting. It's, and yeah, you wouldn't think that it would be exhausting, but it's like when I, when I shot that, that movie, I had actually, I had to brush my teeth when I shot the scene in the movie, I was brushing my teeth in the, in the scene. And we literally did the scene 20 
at least 20 times, possibly close to 30, because we had to do all these different angles and there was four of us in the scenes. So we had to, everyone had to have their close-ups. My gums were sore for days I because I was brushing my teeth all day long. And I was just so tired. I only had like three or four lines, but I was so tired from saying three or four lines the same over and over and over and over and over. Um, it's tough. It is. It's a tough gig for sure. You gotta love it if you if you want to get into the acting. I mean, whatever it is that you choose to get into, you gotta love it. And that's the point. If you want to be happy, you gotta do what you love. No more. No more. Hey, Jonah, you got a question? You got a question for Lynn? You want to give her a question, Jonah? Uh, no. You can go. No, that's your question. All right. No, you guys. The Perkins a good question last time. Go ahead. Don't feel free. Don't be shy, Poppy. You can come on. They know who you are, kid. You got a question for Lynn? Ask her a question real quick. Put me on the spot. I asked my my LA question was kind of what I really wanted to know because I really like LA. So I really wanted to know what your favorite things to do there were. But I also enjoyed traveling a lot. Uh, oh, yeah, sure. I got to. So you, you travel a lot. And something that I always struggle with when I'm traveling is packing. <laughs> Any packing oh. tips? Uh, yeah, pack, just pack light. I, and I still am trying to learn. It's so annoying when you pack too heavy. Um, but a really uh, convenient hack is to pack everything on hangers. Um, and then if everything is hung up and you fold it into your bag, then when you get there, you just pick it all up in one swift movement and you hang it. And so then your hotel room is tidy. You can see everything that you have and you're organized. But <laughs> never tried that. Right. Before, right. The only negative thing is that it's not a very uh, effective way with space. Uh, yeah. It's it's not effective with space in the bag, which then forces you to pack light. So that's actually a positive. So keep your hangers. Thank you. You're I think welcome. That's a, I think that's a great question. Thank Eric said waste of question. I think it's a great question. Very. Uh, I like that question personally because when I pack, my shit is all over the place. I just. It's a it's a mess. It's not very it's not very in line at all. So and that's actually where those you know the ugly wire hangers, the really the really thin ones that you get from like the dry cleaners or something. Right. Yeah. Hates. They're perfect for this because it's they're so thin. They take up. So that's what I save them for. Because if you get like the big round ones, and it takes up too much space in the suitcase. So the thin hangers. Dare I say, G T O, man, that's that's what it. Lynn, we got any other any any other words kind of on your mind, Lynn? Anything else you want to let the people know, or you want to maybe maybe get out there to the world here on the podcast? Uh -huh. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no one, most people usually say no. They usually say nothing. <laughs> that's that's some serious pressure asking that. Um, but I did get a picture of the screenshot from uh, Angel. He's watching. Who's probably. He's probably your newest, uh, biggest fan after the hard time you've been giving me for not speaking Spanish. <laughs> Listen, I mean, I don't, I don't understand it, right? I just don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I got to get in the Spanish lab, kid. You got a Spanish lab, you got to hop in there. I can't, look, look, listen, I've got a lot of words down, a lot of words. I just, I can speak like a three-year-old. So hopefully by Christmas, I can speak like a seven-year-old. Oh, well, actually, we got one more great question. Joel Bradenberg says, does the WPT do any... Pot Lemon Omaha tournaments. Oh. The, 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 the great game of Pot Lemon Omaha. The great game. Um, I mean, yeah, there probably is side events, but I don't know. That's really bad that I don't know that. That's uh, a Matt Savage question. <laughs> but all, uh, I mean, all of our televised events and our main events and the, 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 even the main, and the main Duke Stacks event, they're all, they're all no limit hold them. Oh, I'm sure the great game is on the schedule somewhere. I no Omaha is insane. All right. Well, on that note, we're going to wrap it up then. Even though we are going to wrap it up anyway. Guys, if you want to follow Lynn, check her out on Instagram. Are you verified on Instagram? How's that, how'd you, how did that happen? I know people. In the right Who do you place. know? How do you, how'd you do it? <laughs> a friend of a friend. It, it, it was actually really hard. He, um, he, he managed to hook it up. How big time are you, Lynn? It, it, verified on Instagram, man. I mean, come on. It's just like... You know what happened, actually. So he he uh, submitted the verification applications for for Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, and Instagram is the hardest, and it got rejected. And then uh, at Tiger Jam last year, so I guess this is my one year anniversary of being verified. I was at Tiger Jam, and because I had pictures of playing poker with Tiger on oh. the upper, like the recent photos, he resubmitted again, and boom, approved. <laughs> so thank you, Tiger Woods. <laughs> hey. That's GTO right there. That's GTO Strat right there. So picture the main pictures with celebrities. I'm gonna post that picture with Jen Tilly and let's submit it. No, no, let's do it. 
I feel like for a number of different reasons, I think verified on Instagram is incredibly GTO because also if you get live, they'll, they'll put you in there. And then plus you got the blue check mark. And then Lynn, for the deeper GTO, when it comes to meeting potential women, could be a kind of, I don't know, whatever. We're just thinking out loud, you know? We're, it's, that's, 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 that's it, guys. Do women chase the blue check mark? I don't know, do they? What do you, what are you seeing from women? I have add they? that to the book. I don't think that's gonna be value to the book. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm just brain, I'm thinking out that. Guys, <laughs> We're gonna be back. We're podcasting Saturday. Mori S. Condani. Very right. I think. What do you say? Yeah, no, never mind. <laughs> Come, Larry. Mori S. Condari, I think. Mori S. Condan. Mori S. Condani. Mori S. Mori. Mori from all the shows: High Stakes Poker, Poker After Dark, Super High Roller Bowl, as well. And then Matt Berkey Monday, Phil Helmuth, The Poker Brat Tuesday. Uh, Mike McDonald, Timex Thursday, Jason Kuhn Friday, and then PLP Pratouche, maybe Wednesday or Sunday. I got to figure out the date for him because we're he's uh, are all playing Super Hero Bowl. We're doing that next week. If you want to follow Lynn, check her out on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. You on YouTube, Lynn? You do YouTube yeah. Show? Lynn Go Martin, same thing. Same thing. I make it nice and easy. All right, and uh, let us know what you thought about the podcast. Hit us up on Twitter. Hit us up wherever. Tell us you loved it. Tell us you hated it. Tell us you want us to shut the fuck up. Why are you watching? I have no idea. But let us know what you think. Give us some feedback. Lynn, enjoy your trip to Vegas. Enjoy the venture down to Mexico. I'll be following along from, from, my, uh, from my home in America and exactly what the farm life life's down there. And uh, that's it, guys. I'll be back soon with the 10K PLO scoop final table rail. That'll be very, very soon, I think. So, Lynn, thanks for coming on. Thank you so much. It was no fun. Problem. Guys Bye. out there, peace out. Adios. Take care.